Dietophonic presents The Good. Written by Martin Lytton. We wasn't expecting you. I sent a letter. Huh. I can come back if... Uh, I didn't see no letter. It would have been addressed to Marjorie Collins, your mum. So... Never saw it? No. Lots of crap through the letterbox. Lots. Junk. This would have been No a... flyers, no junk. Says it clear enough on the door, doesn't it? Still, they bung it in. <laughs> Can't read English, probably. This would have been a... Um... Mum never said anything about you coming. I couldn't find the phone number. No landline. Way too expensive. Don't need one now anyway, do you? And Mum won't use a mobile, so it's just me who has a phone, in it? No, right. Well, as I say, I could come back. What's this about? I'm living here proper now. Since I got divorced, it's my permanent address. No, as I said, I'm a lawyer. <sighs> From the MOD? The Ministry of Defence? What, like the Army and Navy and stuff? Well, yes... But I'm... A lawyer? Yes. I'm working on... Like Jag? Sorry? Jag. On telly. You know. Suppose it was a few years ago now, but... Oh, yes. Well, um... Where's your uniform? I don't... You don't look like her. Like, what's her name? You know, in the film. You know, she's Welsh. She uh, she married, what's his name? Uh, Kirk Douglas. Catherine Zeta-Jones? It wasn't Kirk. That's it. Her. Uh, yeah, she's in the film, like, before the TV series. Oh, what was that film called? Look. It wasn't Jag, I know that. <sighs> a Few Good Men. And... That's it? And it was Demi Moore. Was it? Yes. I'll have to Google it. Look. Anyway, I... you're nothing like her. Sorry to disappoint you. Your mother. No need to get arsy. I told you she's asleep. Always sleeps after her lunch. Right. So, let's arrange a time. You still didn't say what you want with her. I just need to go over a deposition with her. A statement. A statement about what? Why do you want her to make a statement? I don't. I want to go over one she's already made. Mum made a statement? What'd she do? I really need to take it up with her. You see... I'm her daughter. She's 83. What's she been saying? What they make her say? She shouldn't be making statements, not without someone there with her. What'd she say? Are you after the benefits? You are, aren't you? It's nothing to... I said I'm living here permanent. I'm like a carer. It's a statement she made some time ago. I just need some... Uh, some things have come up and we are checking on them. When? I don't know nothing about a statement and I've been here two years all the time. When'd she make it? What was it? Shoplifting? Oh, I've told her. Uh, I'm not the police. She made this statement in 1958. 1958? 19 bloody 58? And you're coming after her now? We're not coming after anyone. Look, I'd really rather explain it to your mother. Not without me, you're not. That's fine. If she wants you present... Oh, I'll be present, all right. Count on it. 83 she is. I don't want her signing anything away, do I? I'll be there, all right, don't you worry. I know all about you lot. I'm just... If she made a statement in 19 bloody 58, why do you want to speak to her now? Some new facts have come to light. Right, I get it. You're going to call her a liar. I need to speak to her about what she remembers. Right, what she remembers. <laughs> well, good luck with that. She can't remember what she did last week half the time. It's a bloody good luck with 1958. Oh. Does she have Alzheimer's? Uh, dementia? Well, it's not official, like, but... OK, I'll be... You'll be nothing without me. Not one thing. Not one word. I know your sort. 
What did she see that's so bloody important, like, 40 years later? 65. (laughs) I'd rather take it up with her directly. 60 years. Seriously? Seriously. Very, very seriously. So? What's it got to do with the MOD, then? It's when your mother was stationed in Cyprus. Stationed? Yes. When she was in the army. (laughs) Mum was never in the army. My dad. My dad was in the army. Oh, bloody typical. You can't even... You've got the wrong... Bloody typical. Go on, on your way. Hounding innocent pensioners when there's real criminals... Here's your mum's statement. Well, a copy. Signed... Lance Corporal Marjorie Wilkins. She was in the WIC, telecommunications. She was a telegraphist, actually. She never was. She never was. I have her service record here and her discharge to marry Sergeant Robert Collins. That's Dad. He was... Mum was never in the army. Never. I don't get it. What's it say? Well, all right. I don't see why you shouldn't read it, if you want. It is technically in the public domain, and you are her daughter. Kara? Oof, writing's terrible. Can't make it out. She never could write properly. It's not her writing. She just signed it. What's it say? She was in a convoy. Convoy? Of trucks. On Cyprus. And there was uh, an incident. Incident? Can we wake your mother, do you think? What incident? Or shall I come back? and Make an appointment and come back and speak to her? What incident? Someone was shot. Dad? Was it Dad? I didn't know he was shot. Uh, no, not a soldier. A civilian. Greek. Greek? Greek Cypriot. Shot? Yes, your mum was there that day. Mum never shot anyone. No, we don't think she did. Shot by a soldier, was he? This Greek? That's what we're here to find out. I get it. Sorry? You're one of them lawyers. What? Assling heroes to get money for scumbags. I read about you lot. Look, I just want to talk to your mother. So you can stitch her up? Or someone else? Someone who served their country and you want to screw them over? You can leave now. Someone was shot by one of our soldiers, like my dad, then he needed shooting. Terrorist or something. You should be ashamed. I bet you ain't. And why now? Why 60 years on? There's been a claim. There it is. (laughs) I bet there has. Greek scumbag wants some money for something that didn't happen 60 years ago and you're here to collect it off a British pensioner. On your way. Go on. Out. April. Oh, you've gone and woken her now. April, love. Here, ma'am. I just want to... Piss off. We can clear this up today. Someone there, love. No, she's just leaving. Who is it? Today or another day. But I will need to speak to her. Hassling pensioners and... April! (sighs) Oh, sit there then. That one, the big chair. Yeah. (sighs) Okay, she'll talk to you. Thank you. Though I told her we should throw you out. She just needs the lav when she wakes up. Right. No, of course. They was heroes, all of them. My dad and all of them. They serve their country and next thing you know, some bloody... God, persecution is what it is. Persecution? Yeah, what the papers say. Persecution of our heroes. You need fixing, you do. Fixing? They're still the law. (laughs) Law? Bet you get pedos off as well, don't you? Bet you do. The law. If it wasn't for my dad, you'd have Sharia law now is what you'd have. Coming after my mum? I'll put it online, don't you worry about that. I'm in forums, I am. Chat rooms. Groups. No one is coming after anyone. What groups, may I ask? Wouldn't you like to know? You'll see soon enough. 
You bought the Aldi paper again. It's cheaper, Mum. I like me Andrex. It's way more. Only bit of comfort left in my life, and you... You, you're in my chair. <laughs> Sorry, I... Only one that's high enough. My knees. Of course, I'll move. Sorry. Oh, you weren't to know. Nice cup of love? I'm not leaving you with her. Oh, parrot's cage when I wake up. Go on now. Would you like a cup, Miss, um... Caitlin McLaughlin. I'd love one, thanks, Mrs Collins. Milk, no sugar. There's a love. Go on. She won't bite. Don't you start talking till I get back, Mum. Not a word to her. She's one of them lawyers. Not one word, mind. Lawyer, is it? Well, I don't get visitors at all these days. Last one was Nan Gosling and she died last year. I'm sorry. Stuck in the house with misery guts. Get yourself a new man, I tell her. Last one was a disaster mind. I don't know why she married him. Told her not to. Waiting for me to die so she can get this place to herself, I dare say. Won't even buy me Andrex. Yes. Few extra pence, but you can't beat it for softness. Hmm. Tight git. Whose pension is it, anyway? Now, what was it you wanted, dear? Is my daughter in trouble? Oh, no. Uh, no, um... Perhaps we should wait. Uh, she seems... Hmm. Huh. OK, well... It's about your time in Cyprus. Cyprus? Oh, that was a long time ago, dear. Lovely place, really. Very hot, though. Got through blouses and tunics, horrible army stuff. Ever so scratchy. Whatever do you want to talk about that for? Well... Mind you, never would have seen it, would I, if it weren't for the army. Not like nowadays. Travel anywhere now. Except her. Uh, Travel about as far as the shops, that one, and that's it. Home to rest. Rest. <laughs> she, your daughter, didn't seem to know you'd been in the army. Really? Well, never came up, I expect. Why would that be? Well, you've got children, Catherine. Caitlin. Yes, two. Well, there you are, then. You know how it is. I think... I think I'd mention it. Oh, she's not interested. On her phone all day. Money enough for that. Can't get her to speak to me at all. Dog would be more company. Still. Or a cat. Won't get one. Think of the cost, Mum. Huh? Thinks there'll be more left for her when I pop me clogs. It was a long time ago, the army. Cyprus. Met her dad. Married. Left all that behind. Our boy died soon after he was born. I'm sorry. But, yeah, carry on. Married life. Homekeeping. It was different back then, wasn't it? Then she came along a bit unexpected-like and, well... Now, I'm 83 of a sudden. <laughs> no pictures from back then? Well, somewhere, probably. I should look them out. That's Bob there, though. They're on the shelf. Yeah, go on, have a look. That's misery guts in his arms. Can you believe it? Smiling like that? <laughs> Nothing of him in uniform? Bedside table. And one of our boy, Jack. I could send her to get it. No, that's all right. Look, I've got these. Blimey! <laughs> oh, that's me right there. Oh, God, look at us. That's, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bessie? Betsy? Yorkshire lass and, um... 
Annie, was it? Oh, God. And her uh, from Scotland. <laughs> Look at my hair. <laughs> I told you not to... Oh, give it a rest. Look at this. Come on, put the tray down and have a look. Don't remember all their names. We were split up, see, uh, telegraphists in every camp, so... You never said you was in the army? You never asked. Look at me, air. <laughs> uh, milk and sugar, dear? Just milk, thanks. Well, go on, then. Guests first. Pour for the lady. Is that the war? The war? How old do you think I am? This is Cyprus in, um, 57, 8? Eight? 8. The war. Well, I don't know, do I? Especially as you never said. Not me. Guests first, I said. No manners these days. 1958. And there's this photo as well. <gasps> That's Dad. That's him. With his platoon. Ah, oh, that poncy officer git, right, tosser. And that's, um, Bazza and Jimmy and, and Kev and Whitey. <laughs> Look at him, though. That's my Bob, that is, right there. Just as I remember him. Just like the first time I saw him. Can I keep this? Of course. It's a copy. I've got others. Thank you, Karen. Oh, look at him. Cut above, isn't he? That's the man I fell for, that is. Why have those three got little marks over them? They're... They're the only ones we know are still alive. This one's Alan, I think, and, uh... No, I can't remember these ones' names at all. David Rosney. Alan Kinross. Dave, that's it. Baby Dave, they called him. He looked about 12. <laughs> Always whistling, drove everyone mad. No one else. Just them three. What do you want with them? What? Well, you marked them. Are you harassing them and all? They're the only ones left we can ask. Them and you, Marjorie. She's fixing to frame you all for something, Mum. What are you going on about? I just need to ask. Here to get money for terrorist scumbags from British hero pensioners is what? Ask about what? You shouldn't talk to her, Mum. Shush. About what? About this statement. About that day. Don't say nothing, Mum. Never thought I'd see this again. Mum. I've never actually read it. Mm-hmm. Mum. He wrote it. Lieutenant Lardos wrote them all. We just signed them. I know. The writing's the same in all of them. But that was standard procedure back then. Dictating statements, reading them back to the witness, who then signed them. What are you going on about then? They're all the same. So? I mean exactly the same. Or describe in precise details exactly the same incident, using exactly the same words. Well, if they're all the same, that means that... It means they're fake. It means no one was ever really meant to read them. But the very fact that someone thought it necessary to make them in the first place shows... You need to go now, coming here and... Shush! Why are you here? To evaluate a claim made by surviving relatives of four young men. I see. Do you? What's a claim? What are they after? Relatives. Don't say another word, Mum. It's just people after money. I can get friends around here and sort this. Don't worry. You need protecting from people like her. I need protecting from your noise is what I need. Fancy a breath of fresh air, Cathy? I don't want you alone with her. It's me knees are arthritic, not me brain. Come on, Cathy. I want to go in the garden. Give us an hand, would you? Mum! Just leave it! Thanks, dear. She's always getting herself worked up. 
I can't really get out here, you know, to do the gardening like. And of course she won't lift a finger. Breaks me heart. Bob loved his roses. Look at them now. Can't afford to get someone in, neither. Look at them. Do you smoke? Gave her. Oh, good girl. <laughs> Me too, really. Doctors. Would have catch one off you, though, if you had one. <laughs> Sorry. For the best, I suppose. There was a time she wouldn't like that. We bought this house from Thatcher, you know, back then. Old Street did. Seemed like good times. Now we're the only ones left. All the others sold to landlords. Oh, the tenants, you should hear them. Don't even know what country I'm in sometimes. She, April, finds it hard. She fears them. I don't know, maybe she's right. People going round cutting off heads and stuff. Not like my time, is it? Can't blame her, really. Just wish she'd get herself a decent bloke. These roses, if they were cut back now, they'd still be all right for next year. I can't grip the clippers. I'll blame that phone of hers. Sorry? Aches her angry. On it all the time. Angry. Tell her, but she won't stop it. Didn't get like that with the old phones, did you? And you're not? Angry? Add me time, dearie. Good times. Good husband. Good life. She reckons she's missed out on all that. I suppose she has, really. Good times in the army, too? No regrets, me. Nothing. What is it you're after, exactly? Not me. The relatives. Close your eyes, I suppose. Some sort of... Blame? Is there any? It was different times. But you know what I'm talking about. You weren't surprised when I said there were four of them. You said relatives. Is it parents? And uh, No, it can't be, can it? Not after all this time. No. Siblings. Parents are... Yeah. Mm. They would be by now. <sighs> are you getting cold? Wanted you to see. It was Bob's, this. He dug them beds, built that shed, creosote every year. Dandelions had no chance on his lawn. Out! <laughs> he loved this place. This was Bob, this was. Wanted you to see? Yes. The same up and down here, all of us. Graham and Kath this side. Mike and... Oh, bloody hell, what was her name? Bloody hell, they lived here 12 years. Oh, don't tell April, she already thinks I'm gagger. Anyway, all kept spick and span and proud like. It would make his heart bleed now. Look at them. I mean, I can't blame them, not really. It's not theirs, is it? Short tenancy. Who's going to do the garden? Not them. But it looks. Yes. You got an house? Yes. Of course you do. Lawyer and all. <laughs> nice garden. I try to keep it up. I be not a gardener? No. All that lawyering keeps you busy, though. It does. Hmm. Just wanted you to see, that's all. Understand what he was like. This garden, them roses, our neighbours. That's what he was like. I understand. We can go in now. I'll need the lav again.
at you online. Got a few likes already. Couple of comments too. End of the week you'll be viral. Just you wait. Show me. Your phone. Now. Show me. What? No way are you going anywhere near my phone. What, so you can... <laughs> no way. You publish something about me? I presume a photo taken without my permission. Now have the guts to show me. OK, but understand this. If it subsequently comes to my attention that you have written something untrue, something defamatory, if you or any of your friends have made threats or incitement to violence or statements that can be construed as such, then I shall prosecute. Is that understood? Good. Just so we're clear. You can't threaten me. I'll get someone round. It's disgusting what you're doing. Really? Why is that? Soldiers have served their country. Are people in uniform? The uniform doesn't stop them being answerable for their actions. Says the woman not in uniform. And have you worn a uniform, April? <laughs> At least I don't go around hassling them as as. Neither do I. Do people on your online forums want to bring back hanging for murder? And for pedos, that you don't. If the murder was committed by a soldier in uniform? Shooting terrorists isn't murder. Shooting civilians is. Shooting prisoners is. Shooting teenage civilian prisoners definitely is. If they were shot, they needed shooting. You know absolutely nothing about this case. Nothing. You didn't even read your mother's statement. You don't get to have an opinion before you hear the facts. I don't need your facts to know what I think. And there it is. What? There what is? Yeah, that's right. I know all about you, all right. Says the daughter who didn't even know her own mother was in the army. Coming here to get cash for terrorists when pensioners can't even afford a... How much do they pay you for this, eh? More than mum and me get in a year, I bet. April, come and give us an hand, love. My knees are killing me now. Can't get anything from the council for the bathroom. You know, some of them arms to help her get up off the loo. And we've still got a bath, not a walk-in shower. No money for that, is there? pro But you, they can pay. And money for terrorists? Oh, no problem. I'm coming, ma'am. Bon. Bon. If you are enjoying Theatre Phonic, come join us in the green room by becoming a patron. Just £2 a month will get you ad-free episodes. £5 a month and you will also have blooper reels, after-show question and answer sessions, the occasional bonus episode and exclusive Theatrophonic merch. Our £10 top tier also gives you the opportunity to attend a live play recording, as well as a chance to name a character in an episode. Head along to theatrephonic.com forward slash Patreon for more information. Bon. Bon. Oh, knees are bad today. I'm sorry, I could come back if you... Or you could just go and never come back. Uh, uh, oh. Right then. OK, if you're sure, would it be all right if I recorded this conversation? No. What for? Yes. For the tape, an interview with Marjorie Collins. Also present, Caitlin McLaughlin and April... Crawford. Divorced now, though. I'm her carer now. Right. In 2018, during building work, the remains of four young men were uncovered at a site between the villages of Lovaras and Calochorio, Cyprus. For the tape, I am showing Mrs Collins photograph one. 2018? Yes. The bodies were subsequently identified as... How? <sighs> they were fully clothed and still carrying their identity cards. I am now showing the ID photographs of four males. Gregorius Scoparis, age 17. Georgios Savadas, 18. His brother Stas, 16. Dimitris Kanthos, 17. All reported missing by their parents on July 1958. The site was forensically examined and bullets were recovered from the Remains. Photo 6. 
They were found to be 9 by 19 mm parabellum rounds, manufactured by the Enfield Company in Great Britain. Sten gun ammunition. Photo 7 shows the platoon in question, two of whom are carrying Sten guns. Do not take a picture of these men. Why would I want to do that? <sighs> I've got people who can check stuff. Yeah, that's right. If you think you're coming here and... Shush! Oh. Of course, we had to do a lot of research, finding which units were operational on Cyprus at the time of the disappearances, shifting through unit records, battalion diaries, that sort of thing. None of this stuff is digitalised. There are thousands and thousands of files and documents to check. But eventually it was narrowed down to this unit on this day writing these statements. The date and location fit. That's all you got? You come here with that? Listen, from at Brit Boot 492, over 4 million Sten guns produced. Or how about this? At Patriot Games 25, Cypriot terrorists also had Stens, not to mention Muslim Turkish who topped loads of Greeks. Yeah. She can't prove nothing. Here, they're all saying you're not to talk to a mum. Don't say... Will you put that thing away? I don't need help. Not from you, not from that contraption. Put it away. Better still chuck it out. Bloody thing. Just give it a rest. Did I say I needed help? Did I? Bloody hell. Mum, I'm just... <sighs> I'm sure I've come to the right place. We had a big argument about the camp. Officer says we need to make statements. Uh, some of the lads, especially the older ones, um, a couple had been in Korea, they said it was like, bollock, say nothing. Just leave it. But E, officer, says it's not a war, it's a civilian emergency. And we would need to get something written down in case anything ever comes up. And some of the platoon agreed with him and some didn't. So, in the end, he wrote the bloody things. Always knew he was a useless git. I'm guessing if he hadn't written them, you wouldn't be here. He was right about one thing. He was right about it not being a war. Seemed like a war to us. Driving up roads and never knowing... You can't imagine what it was like. Weren't even allowed to walk in the big towns alone. You know, unescorted. Soldiers were being shot, blown up, all sorts. Bastards. And a squaddy dead on the streets of Limassol is no less dead than one on the beach on D-Day, is he? Like I say, seemed like a war to us. Yeah. Anyway, so what happened was, um, a few days before... An officer and his wife were murdered. They'd stopped at a junction or something in Limassol, in their car, you know, uh, and this terrorist, Greek, just walks up and, you know, shoots him in the face. So the wife, she jumps out of the car, runs up the street, but the gunman runs after her and shoots her in the back. Scum. Just guns her down. I mean... Soldiers? OK, that's one thing. Even me. I was in uniform, so, you know, fair enough. Sort of. But she... She was just somebody's wife out shopping. Just scumbags. And everyone was angry. It was all in the papers and everything. We was all just mad. Right in the middle of the street, broad daylight... And the Greeks wouldn't tell nobody nothing, like nothing. All blind and deaf suddenly. The boys were all worked up about it, you know. Longing for someone to try it on with them so they could... Bloody right too. But I suppose they knew that too, the Greeks. And they kept their heads down. Nothing happened at all. So, anyway... I'm due to go up to a camp in the hills to take over from a girl who's been up there a couple of weeks. They, you know, swap us around pretty regular. So I'd go up with the trucks taking supplies and stuff and she'd come back down. 
Done it lots of times before. Those hills is steep. I mean, those old trucks would grind away for hours, crawling up these bare brown slopes. No cover by the road. Plenty of places to throw a grenade or take a pot shot. Slowing right down to take these horrible bends, with the road just falling away. And hot, oh... We'd roll up the sides of the trucks. You know, the canvas covers to get air, but it was like an oven that time of year. So, <clears throat> this day, we was a scout car. Ferret, they called them. Out front with the officer twat and a Bren gunner. And then a three-tonner with Bob up top riding shotgun. Ramrod straight. Never showed a sign of fear. Then another three-tonner. Me and that one, with the stores and a few of the lads. And coming up last, another ferret. We drove up through a village. Oh, the looks. The ones that did look, that didn't just turn away, I mean. They was eight. Pure eight. And the lads stared right back. So, through this village then... And more road, steep and curving, and some trees. Then this um, ravine, they called it. And there were some men by the road, four of them, walking down towards us. When they saw us, they stopped. And the officer speeds up to them in his ferret, and Bob's truck tries to follow, but was way slower. Then one of the lads in my truck sort of grabs me and pushes me down to the floor, and I was really frightened then. I mean, they thought it was all kicking off and everyone was loading their guns. That metallic clicking. I could hear it above the engine. And then the truck stops, and all the lads jump out. And there's a lot of shouting, but no shooting. So after a bit, I sort of pops my head up over the side of the truck, and they had these... Four Greeks kneeling down, hands up over their heads, and the boys surrounding them all angry and slapping them about a bit, perhaps. Officers sort of standing there looking at them, but he wasn't deciding anything, know what I mean? Sort of there, but not there. And Bob says we've got to move further from the village in case they get a gang together to come out to us. And the officer says... What about these four? And Bob says, take them with us, of course. So the boys chuck them into the back of Bob's truck and off we go, probably about another mile or so, and, and then we come to this sort of flat place by the side of the road, some trees growing, and I remember looking out across the hills into the forest below and thinking, what a wonderful view. Strange how I remember that. So anyway, Bob's truck pulls over an hour's behind him and the ferret back of us. Idiot officer in front drove on a couple of hundred yards before he even see he'd lost his convoy. That about sums him up. So he's reversing back down towards us. And the boys in Bob's truck chucked the four men out of the truck onto the ground. Well, I, I could see they'd been knocked about a bit. Yeah, bloody right. Oh, the boys was pretty angry, remember? So the officer jumps out of his car and says, like, why have you stopped or something? And Bob says, well, we just need to ask these gentlemen. And he said that, gentlemen, some questions and find out if the road was clear ahead. No ambushes or nothing. Of course, what could he say? He was such a tosser, and all the boys were already out of the trucks, and you could see that they wanted to give these Greeks a good hiding. So they did. <laughs> I suppose it was pretty nasty. Mm. But I think... I do think they would have just worked them over and left them if... 
The lads are sort of worked off their anger, know what I mean? And they'd given them a kicking and... Anyway, I remember it was very hot and they was all sweating dark through their shirts. So uh, I really think that would have been it. They were sort of drifting back to the trucks knowing it was over. Well, everyone knew, except maybe the four Greeks. Maybe they thought their time had come. I don't know. But anyway... One of them, oh, don't ask me which, he kind of crawled a bit towards me. He could see me sitting in the back of the truck where I'd stayed the old time, and he said in English, because his nose was pretty badly smashed and his mouth, face all swollen and bruising up. He says, please, madame, please, madam. That's all. But that was just the wrong thing to say that day, I can tell you. What with the officer's wife and all. There was this noise. Never heard anything like it. Just a noise from all our lads at the same time. And it was quiet and loud, both. And it was the angriest thing I'd ever heard in my life. Just... Never heard nothing like it again. Not ever. And Bob, quick as you like, files his sten. And the noise of that was... Well, it was shocking. And that Greek, he just crumples up right there below me. Just dust and blood. And the other three start uh, owling and blubbing and the officer is standing there, pale and alone. And I heard him say, clear as you like. Now, what do we do? But there was no question of that. None at all. So, Bob and Whitey, well, they finished the job. And then it was quiet, real quiet, you know. And I could hear the wind in the trees and it sounded peaceful like and no one was saying anything at all. So Bob says, right, we'll bury him here in the trees and no one the wiser. Well, the officer was still just standing there like completely out of it. So the lads quickly dug a pit and buried the four Greeks. And that would have been that if some of the boys hadn't begun to argue, like I said, back at camp. Some of them were thinking it wasn't right. Others were saying, forget it. And so the officer as couldn't make a proper decision to save his life, said we'd write an after-action report about how we'd been ambushed on the road and returned fire and possibly taken out some terrorists. And then, if anyone would say anything, if anyone came looking or asking, we'd all have the same story. So he wrote his stuff and we signed it. And that was that. No one ever came asking anyway. But they was terrorists. They weren't. If they were, they'd have been carrying weapons. And they would have been displayed, counted, photographed along with the bodies. That's what the army did back then. Not carrying that day, they weren't. But what were they doing on that road? Visiting relatives in Novaras, according to their family. Yeah, right. Why'd they stop then as soon as they saw... Because they were afraid. Rightly so, as it turned out. You weren't there. Lots of them in those hills were terrorists. Or looking the other way. Proper parched I am now with all that gabbing. 
Be a love, make us another. Pot's gone cold. I don't want to leave you with her, Mum. She's going to try and pin this on you. I'll go on with you. I never did nothing. There's nothing I got to answer for. In that right, Kath? What was Whitey's real name? What? Uh, why? Um, I, I don't know. No idea. Why? So he's not one of these three? These ones still alive today? Oh, I get it. No, Whitey was this one here. Lance Corporal Richard Oldham. OK. In that case, if if your testimony is true... Of course it is. Then the actual perpetrators are now deceased and there will be, I think, no action taken against any individuals still living. I am now turning off the tape. So if Dad had still been alive, you'd have dragged him off to prison like a bloody criminal. You would have, wouldn't you? I would not have dragged him off. But there would have been a prima facie case to answer here, yes. It's you that wants locking up. They were terrorists. Deserved it. How many lives did he save by knocking them off? Ever think of that? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. Because what I can tell you is that after this incident, after the families tried to find out the truth and were stonewalled by the authorities, the relatives, especially the younger brother of Gregorius Scaparis here, became, well, I suppose you would say today, radicalised. Heavily involved in the EOKA movement. A leader, even. Terrorist. Ha! See? That depends on your view of history. But the point is, there was no record, none at all, of their involvement before. Doesn't mean they wasn't. No. But we do know for certain that the whole village became a hotbed of resentment and resistance after... And the younger Scaparis brother, in particular, as I said, is known to have been directly involved in the deaths of British soldiers. Murder, you mean? How many? Should have gone down and cleared out the old village. Pity they didn't. How many? Fourteen that we know of. The evil that men do lives after them. Evil is right, terrorist scum. Go and put that kettle on. Go on. You're right, dear. Catherine? Are you? We never mentioned it after, Bob and I. All these years. Ever. Not once. That day to this. Really? No. It was... I don't know. Part of another life, I suppose. That war. (sighs) Ah, all right. Call it what you will. By the time I left, I think more than 400 of our boys had been killed, and girls. Don't forget that. People have no idea. You have no idea. I do, you see. Oh. Where? Afghanistan. Two tours. And one in Iraq. And I've got the scars to prove it. What were you? An idiot officer. (laughs) And I can tell you that at no time, no matter what, no matter what, did I ever let my troops administer any sort of rough justice. Not ever. And if they had tried, I'd have had them in front of a court-martial so fast. I'm sure you would. Do you know what became of him, my officer? You must have tried to track him down. Lieutenant Arthur Simondley left the army after his national service and suffered a full mental breakdown. He was committed to an asylum. He hanged himself in his room in May 1960. The army wasn't for him, is all. You could tell right off. Should never have been put in charge of a platoon. Never. He was a weak man. Not what you said. Not evil. No. He was a bystander. 
And your Bob was strong. He was. Don't you dare to try and make him out to be something else. Something like... Something like a murderer. He was a soldier. A good one, too. Good. What's the shouting? What's that, Mum? What have you been saying? What have... Have you... Mum, is she... I'm going to get... I don't need your help. Not now. Not ever. All I need is a cup of tea. Can you do that? Can you? Just this once. Just go and get the bloody tea. I don't know. Wish she... But you know what I'm talking about then. Up in their mills. Not knowing who's friendly. You need someone strong up there. You do. Physically and morally. Nothing wrong with my Bob's morals. Not then, not ever. He was a good man. It was different times. Don't go thinking that was the only incident. It happened a lot. We all knew. We all heard. I know. So did the Greeks. We lied about these four. We lied about others too. I'm just here to redress the truth. Redress. That's an interesting word, eh? Isn't it? Like, put a fresh jacket on, because the old one's dirty. <laughs> Something like that. At least you're acknowledging the stain. Didn't say that. Not me. That's you, dear, doing the redressing. Let him mash a little. You all right, Mum? And you, if you've finished shit-stirring, you can just go now. Well... Stay for a cuppa. Mum! And when was the last time you sat and talked to me, eh? No. There we are, then. At least Cathy here knows I'm alive. What happens now? Nothing. With your information, I shall write up a report recommending we close the case. Pay him, you mean? Compensation will be paid to the surviving relatives, yes. How much? How much? An appropriate sum will be decided by the Reparations Committee. And meanwhile, Mum has to scrape by on her pension. She can't even walk to the doctors anymore, but money for a taxi? No, you've got a bus pass. What else do you need? Can't even get out of bed some days. Look at me and tell me that's right. Four men were murdered. For years, everyone in the village knew what had happened. Knew it had to be the British soldiers that had passed by in those trucks. I mean, they heard the shots. And we denied it. And denied it and went on denying it until a Russian businessman brought a plot of land overlooking a beautiful valley and started to lay foundations for his dream house. And then, pretending, stopped. So yes, I'll look you or your mum or anyone in the eye and tell them that this is right. Their parents went to their graves knowing they'd been lied to, not knowing how their children died or where they were buried. That money could have been used for pensions or the NHS. Instead, you could... Yes, it could. And who knows, maybe it would have been if you're... If this unit had not shot those four men. Don't you try and blame my dad for any of this. It was a beautiful spot. That view. Got to say, it would be a nice place for a house. Wish I'd known. I wish he'd said. I'd have told him how proud I was, all right. Where are they now, those four? In the graveyard of Calochorio, with their family, finally. You gonna pour that, or what? Not for me, thanks. Wasn't offering, was I? It must be good to finally get it off your chest. Like I said, we never spoke about it at all. <clears throat> we got married. I left all that behind. And I don't know that Bob thought of it ever, either. If he did, he never let on. Except there was just once. Just once, I think he might have... The day... The day we laid our own lad, our Jack, in the ground. I wondered... 
Maybe he thought it was like, you know, because of what happened, some sort of, that Jack was taken from him because he, the way he looked, something not just sad. It sort of, just for a second, it reminded me of how he looked back then. Just for a second. It was... But it can't be, can it, Cathy? Not Jack. He was innocent. Why are you asking her? Because she's the law in this room. She's not the law. Your daughter's right, Marjorie. I'm not the law. But for the record, no, I don't accept for one moment that the death of your son was connected in any way to the deaths of these four other innocents on that hill. That is not any sort of justice I believe in. See? What good have you done, coming here and raking it all up? What good except to get some cash from money-grubbing foreigners, trying to drag our soldiers' names through the mud? Dad never had nothing to feel guilty about, Mum. Nothing. Well, I'll be... On your way. Yeah. Don't come back, neither. That's tea in the pot. Uh, thank you, no. I'll get back and write this up. Will I have to sign anything? You are not... No, I don't think so. My affidavit should be sufficient. But I'll let you know if you do. You'd be welcome. Mum! Thank you for seeing me. But I bet you'll still be hassling them other three that are still alive. Well, two of them had advanced dementia and the third seems to have dropped off the map altogether. What? So, so if Mum hadn't spoken to you today, those scumbags wouldn't get anything. If I'd have known that from the start, I would never have... Leave me that one of the platoon. Yes, of course. And this one of you and the other woman? If you like. You tricked us. I'll be complaining, don't think I won't. Your mother has just made a statement completely contradicting the one she signed originally, appertaining to the brutal beating and murder of four youths which she witnessed and which she was subsequently complicit in covering up. Complain away. Get out of my house. My house. Mum, she just threatened you. She threatened you. I'd listen if I were you. You're taking her side? I'd say she was a lady who was carry out her threats. <laughs> what with being a soldier and all. Dad was a soldier. You was a soldier. She's just a... She's been in that Afghanistan. She's got marks on her body. She didn't threaten me. I ain't complaining and neither are you. Now, leave it. Goodbye, Mrs Collins. Oh, dear. Come again. Any time you feel like a chat. Mum. You. You know where the door is. You'll see her out. Right. Don't want her nicking anything. Good riddance. She was all right. How can you say that? Because I ain't all angry all the time, is how? You should be, Mum. How you live, the crap pension and benefits and the cuts, and she just comes in here looking for a cash handout for a bunch of terrorists has got exactly what they deserved. You're angry enough for both of us, I reckon. And you weren't there. So, at least she talked to me. You don't understand the silence, how it makes me feel. Silence? You never told me. All these years. You were in the army. Made me look like a right idiot not knowing that. Could see her looking down her nose at me. Why did you never tell me? It's like you... Don't you dare. Well, why then? I don't know. I said it was different times and we moved on. It, it didn't seem... And even Dad. I only knew because of the photo in your room. But he never talked about it, did he? Never to me. How come? Nor to me. Just like I said to Cathy now. And then, look, everything after Jack was different. Everything. We needed it behind us. All of it. Jack. Right, of course. I'd have been a boy. I might have joined up myself. She joined up. You're taking her side again. Anyway, your dad said from the first he wanted to keep Jack out of the army. So I doubt he'd have encouraged you to do that. Funny. 
Only just remembered that right after he was born. First time he picked him up. Why did I forget that? Jack, Jack, every year. It's Jack's birthday. He'll have been 16, 17, 21. Jack, Jack, Jack. You know what? Those Greeks was better off not knowing where their kids was at, not having a grave to visit, dragging me up to the cemetery every year, being the girl that's alive. Funny how I always feel like I'm the one that was buried. I would have been proud of you, Mum, if you'd said. Proud. I'm proud anyway. I don't need your... April? April, love? April, I need to get up. April, come and give us a hand. There's a good girl. You have been listening to The Good, written by Martin Lytton, directed by Emmeline Brayfield, with Helen Fullerton as Caitlin, Emmeline Brayfield as April, and Jane Lloyd as Marjorie, produced by Cat on a Piano Productions. For a full list of the music used in the episode, please see the show notes. The Theatophonic theme tune was composed by Jackson Pentland, performed by Jackson Pentland, Molly Fife Taylor, and Emmeline Brayfield. For more information about the Theatophonic podcast, go to theatophonic.com, tweet or Instagram us at Theatophonic, or visit our Facebook page. If you enjoy Theatophonic and would like to get more content, please consider becoming a patron by going to patreon.com forward slash Theatophonic. Please don't forget to rate and review. Thank you for listening. Ba-da.